Developers in New York are trying to entice high end renters with out of the box amenities. Now, what are we talking about? Are we talking about, you know, fancy kitchens, high end appliances? No, no, no. That's, they already have all that stuff. They need to provide more. And so, what they're offering is something known as amenities programming. What's that? When every luxury building begins to appear indistinguishable, with the same attention to detail, the same high end appliances and tasteful finishes, developers have to look elsewhere to lure tenants. Mm. And so what they do is they offer like seminars, baking classes, you know, like you get together with other people in the building to learn how to make chocolate. Yeah. So you know how we talk about projection all the time on the show, the right wingers who are uh, gay themselves, uh, think everybody else is gay, the ones that are pedophiles say everybody else is pedophiles, right? Anna's doing that, but not on bad issues. Anna's doing that with who would want to hang out with their neighbors? <laughs> Anna, there's some chance that others might want to hang out no, with their you neighbors. Don't. No, you don't. <laughs> Guys, this is, by, this is in New York. This is in New York City. This is in New York City. Can we just, no, but like take that in, Jenk. Take that in. This is in New York. You're surrounded with things to do. Go outside. Live your life. Touch grass. Get off the internet. Like what? What are you doing? You're afraid to walk outside of your building? No, this is madness. It's unacceptable. I don't allow it. Ah, so funny. By the way, I find it totally benign. No. <laughs> and it, and I and I think this might be our biggest disagreement. Um, I. I I mean, this has got yuppie written all over it. This so. is New York City. What's the point in what's the point in living in Manhattan, right? Where you're you're surrounded by endless options. If you need to pay a premium, you're paying a premium for amenities programming. So some, so some schmuck shows up for a seminar and you enjoy your time with your neighbors. What? <laughs> You're so oh salty. God. They can use you in some of the cooking seminars. Look, you're going to read some of the amenities, and I guarantee you that there are going to be some people Insane. in the audience who are going to think, well, those sound lovely. Listen, listen, okay? You're living in a small town in Ohio or Idaho. What? I get it. I get it, okay? Like, I get it. I don't get this. This is New York City. Okay, all right. Let's, what, what, are they, what are they offering? So, uh, one example is a sought after personal chef. This person does not reveal their identity, but this person has taught a truffle making class. Yeah, let me just tell you guys something. So in the old days, we used to call them yuppies. Now the kids call them PMCs, professional management class. But people who are like a little bit upper class buying these super fancy apartments in very expensive Manhattan, right? They love the idea of a celebrity chef coming in and teaching truffle class. That's like, that is, you can't ask for any, for them, that's the perfect thing to offer. Like, they hit the, the target in the bullseye with that one. A truffle making class could be a lot of fun. All if, of a sudden. Hold on, hold on. If it's a private truffle making class, just for you. <laughs> For me and my husband. So right? ironically, you're being more elitist than these people. Call it elitist, call it antisocial, I don't care, but I don't want to <laughs> hang out with my neighbors. Certainly, I do not want to hang out with people in my building, okay? With a few exceptions. But like, you're paying a premium for it too. You get what I'm saying? No, like, okay, but anyway, all right, all right. okay. For more, by the way, this uh, personal chef. Is hilarious. So um, the personal chef says this to New York Magazine. Most of the people that come to the classes are between 35 and 60 because people who are 28 already know how to have fun. Oh, don't, don't say that, brother. That one hurts. Okay. So, so apparently he's secretly on Anna's team. Let me let me just say, 28 year olds living in New York City are actually living in New York City. You get what I'm saying? Oh. For sure. Yeah. Now, look. In the old days, I used to say, you sh if you're single, you should live in New York for at least a year in your life. Wherever you are, go to New York because it's amazing. It's fun. It's, it's so vibrant and energetic. And there's people in the uh, in the streets, and you run into people. You uh, come up with fortuitous relationships, etc. 
But I'm so old school. And then new days, everything's on apps, right? So, but I know, I mean, I just talked to a friend in New York. So you go on the dating apps, especially if you're in this, the people who can afford this, you're gonna have so many dates, so many things to do that you ain't got time for no truffle class. Let me give you more details, more examples. So there's Livin LTD offers a monthly menu of programming that it sends to building developers and managers who then pick and choose what they want. There's an ice cream, you scream party with Van Leeuwen. I don't know what a Van Leeuwen is, but it's about $1,600 for 100 people. And an Italian summer night, which I will admit does sound lovely, with Aperol spritzes and Negronis for $2,350. I mean, this is just tailor made for PMCs. Although some live on LTD concierges specialize in getting theater tickets and impossible reservations as if they were working in a hotel. You can't always just pick up the phone and get a table at Polo Bar or Carbone for just anyone, Fazio <laughs> says. Fazio's the head of the company. But you can make residents feel like they're special people with interesting taste. You can throw them a DIY lobster roll making seminar. How hard is it to make a lobster roll? You boil the lobster, if that's what you're into, okay? You get the bread, you butter the bread, you put the lobster on the bread. Like, what, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> no, you could make it in a lot of different ways. Not that I would know. I'm that's the, the best way. Okay, okay, keep it simple. Okay. Anyways, she see, and that one was gratis. She's not even gonna charge you twenty three hundred. But maybe I will, okay? <laughs> you better watch out. So look, I just I think they're being smart. They're <sighs> they know their target audience and they are serving that demographic. I'm not kidding. So I folks in that category, the idea that they could uh, get a reservation at Carbone or get <laughs> theater tickets that were otherwise hard to get. Oh, I love it. It's not for me. It's not. And, but by the way, other things would be for me, right? So to each his own. But for folks in that income group, this is mana from heaven. So they're. I think they're being. They're targeting them exactly right. So final thing that I'll say. We've been talking about this in the context of luxury buildings. But some of the landlords who do not have luxury offerings and sound like they you know, have incredibly tiny units are trying to entice renters to rent with them with amenities programming. Okay, so get a load of this, this is graphic seven. At Hudson Yards' newest rental edition, The Set, some of the studios are so small that the beds fold away to clear up floor space. The rent is over $3,500 a month. But before folding up their bed every night, residents can enjoy cultural programming. A wellness disruptor's latest fitness innovation. Please kill me right now. <laughs> a wellness disruptor. No, no just kill Shut me. Shut up. I'm trying to defend you guys. And for a lot, a lot of good folks would love these classes. But a wellness disruptor, yeah, how come about, on. How about give me a bedroom, okay, how about that? A bedroom and lower rent, I prefer that over a wellness instructor um, lecturing me about how to live a better life. No, no, but the great thing is it's not an instructor, it's a wellness disruptor. <laughs> so he's gonna disrupt your wellness. <laughs> yeah, by putting you in a room for $3,500 with a fold away bed. <laughs> so you guys, you guys. The thing that's like annoying me about this is number one, I just want to, sorry, I want to encourage people to like go out, just go outside of your homes. And I know I'm a little bit of a homebody, but I have the best. Ironic. I know it is ironic, but I do go out. I do go out. In fact, last Friday, went out to dinner with my best friend. I had a souffle with her. It was Whoa, delicious. look at that. Ooh. But it feels good to get out. Get out. And then for the, Landlords that are doing the amenities programming in lieu of offering living space and decent rental prices, I hate you, and that's it. Okay, I, last thing for me is I can't get enough of this. So I'm going to take a wellness disruptor's <laughs> latest fitness innovation. Just kill me! <laughs> it's so, it's the perfect buzzwords for this group of folks, okay? Everything has to be disrupted. 
no one's disrupting a damn thing. They love the status quo. But that's why they but they talk about yeah. disruptors nonstop. They want to be rebels, yeah. Right. Yeah. And and innovations and fitness, right? There ain't no innovations. You just keep going in circles. You do the yoga, then you do the Pilates, and then you do this, and then and then oh look, yoga's back. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. look, Pilates is back. There's no disruptors, there's no innovation, just go work out, okay? Yeah. And pay a lot less to go to a gym instead of having a wellness disruptor no. disrupt your work. By the way, so one of the things that this New York Magazine piece referenced was the small talk that people in the building engage in as they get together for the amenities programming. And one of the questions that they'll ask themselves is like, "Oh, are you all caught up on White Lotus? It's like, oh, are you all caught up on the show that makes fun of people like us? <laughs> like, I just love it. Yeah, I don't know. But that's the thing, right? Because the folks in that group, they might like these things that are a little frou frou and they might get a little bit tricked into paying too high a price to get these amenities, yeah. etc. Hmm. On the other hand, it's high prices everywhere in New York, right? But they're not bad people, right? No, I'm not, no. They're not bad people. I'm just trying to give them advice to live a better life. Here, here, I'm disrupting. Oh, the that's it. She's a disruptor. That's it. You know what? She could do a seminar for you guys. Okay. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. If you were an actual disruptor, do you have any idea how much they would hate you? Okay. Well, no, but, I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> but I kind of am, and they kind of do, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So a, a disruptor comes and shakes up your core beliefs. And makes you reevaluate things. That's not what you're gonna get out of any of these seminars. What you're gonna get is a lot of the things that you already believe, mm -hmm. and that's how they're trying to reel you in to prices that are too high. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, so really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So, all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.